Dietary sugars, not as sour as they are made out to be, was the topic of Professor Dennis M. Beer's lecture at the 95th Nestle Nutrition Institute online workshop. Dr. Beer is a professor at the Children's Nutrition Research Center at the Baylor College of Medicine, Houston. When talking about possible adverse effects of a specific nutrient, such as sugars, Professor Beer reminded of the good nutritional practices, that is, sugars, like any macronutrient, should not be consumed in amounts that interfere with satisfying the requirements for adequacy of all other essential nutrients. No macronutrient, such as proteins, fats, or sugars, should be consumed in amounts that lead to excess energy storage. Having this in mind, Sugars are Mother Nature's most essential nutrients from an evolutionary and nutritional perspective. Professor Beer supported this statement as following. All humans can make every sugar that is necessary for life. Glucose is the only important fuel for the fetus. Infants are born with sweet taste receptors, and sugars represent approximately one-third of the calories in human milk. Current evidence suggests that infants are born with a gut-to-brain sugar-sensing pathway that promotes the development of a behavioral preference for sugar. Moreover, glucose is the preferred fuel by the brain during the period of brain growth in the first six to nine years of life. Children need approximately three times the amount of glucose as adults. Even in the absence of dietary carbohydrates, the brain depends mainly on glucose derived from amino acids coming from muscle protein degradation, a process that is called gluconeogenesis. Does all this make sense if sugars were inherently toxic? In addition, lean children seem to be able to metabolize a wide range of sugar or carbohydrate intake. Blood glucose response to oral glucose indicates that lean children have a very great capacity to metabolize sugar. On the basis of a series of clinical trials, Professor Beer concluded that lean children aged between 6 and 17 years adjust appropriately to wide changes in dietary carbohydrate intake. In these studies, the diet provided to the study participants for one week contained 30% or 60% of the dietary energy as carbohydrates. Of this, 6% to 24% of energy was as fructose. The low or high carbohydrate intake had no effect on glucose production, gluconeogenesis and lipolysis. However, Lean children had increased insulin sensitivity to match the increased carbohydrate intake, whereas in obese children, insulin secretion had increased. Moreover, the high and low fructose intake had no effect on the tested parameters. What about the evidence base for the discussed effects of sugars on health? On the basis of an extensive review from the UK Scientific Advisory Committee on Nutrition in 2015, Dietary sugars intake of adults seems to have no association with coronary events, systolic or diastolic blood pressure, total LDL or HDL blood cholesterol, fasting blood triglycerides, blood glucose or insulin levels, and the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Furthermore, the randomized controlled trials, or RCTs, available for this review provide insufficient evidence on the effect of sugar-rich foods on energy intake, sugars on glycemia, impaired glucose tolerance and glycosylated blood proteins, sugars on vascular compliance and CRP, or sugars on periodontal disease. There is also insufficient evidence from RCTs on the effect of sugar-sweetened beverages on glycemia or insulinemia, insulin resistance or sensitivity, body weight or weight gain, and caries in mixed and permanent teeth. Professor Beer also acknowledged that this review identified a number of associations that appeared to be positive, primarily from association studies, which, however, cannot prove causality. Professor Beer concluded his talk with the following take-home messages. Mother Nature has demonstrated that sugars are essential metabolic coins of the realm. Lean children metabolize sugars very efficiently. The evidence from studies in adults suggests that sugars are causally responsible for most detrimental outcomes attributed to them is weak at best. Adverse outcomes appear strongly dependent on the maintenance of energy balance. This is linked to another takeout from the UK review that sugars in sugar-sweetened beverages appear to have different effects than other dietary sources of sugars. Finally, 
policy and intervention should be focused on the whole diet and lifestyle to prevent obesity, the real culprit, not sugars per se.